Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim, the truck's Daisy, and we are hauling paws. We transport campers, RVs, all over this beautiful country of ours, and they pay us for it. It's a pretty sweet gig. The goal on this channel is to let new people know kind of what this industry is all about so they can get some idea before they want to come into it and pass along as many tips and tricks as I can along the way. Right now there's a lot of complaining going on and a lot rightfully so that there's just no loads available, can't take it, nothing for me, blah blah blah. Now I know the load boards are thin, like really thin. It is August 31st, 2022, and the load boards are thinner than I've ever seen them. But you can still get a load if you're hungry. I spent the night in Nebraska. That's where I had to shut down at. I got up super early this morning. I got my cup of coffee. And I got everything set up in the back for my, the way that I do my call-ins in the morning when I really want to load. So I got that all set up. I was up about, I don't know, about an hour, hour and a half before the office opened. So I got everything all set up, got on the phone. You gotta be fast on that redial button. And I picked the load. I was number two on the on the call list and off I am to California. So the loads are out there, you just have to be willing to go anywhere to chase the money. I don't particularly like going to California, but I'm in the business of hauling campers and that's where a camper was going. So off to California I go. $4,500 that one pays so I'm rolling now I'm coming off a four and a half week vacation I have driven 5,500 miles since I got back on the road I have grossed just under $5,700 now that 5,500 miles is total miles, not loaded miles. That's both directions, unloaded and loaded. So the loads are out there. I'm still rolling. So if you're hungry, you can get a load and roll too. If you're gonna be one of those people that are like, I don't wanna go to here, or I only go to there, or I only go to Florida, I only go to New York, whatever, if you're going to be picky, then yes, you're going to have a hard time finding loads. So now I'm on the road headed back to Topeka for my pickup. And we're going to pick up a fifth wheel out of Topeka and head to California. Oh joy. <laughs> now hopefully this dealer will still accept on Sundays. It says that it will. I got to give him a call make sure that since it's a holiday weekend, they're still going to do it. But the bottom line is I'm going to get to California, deliver, and I'll probably be at my reset. So I might be able to make it back to Reno and then do a reset in Reno, but I'm not sure if I'll make it that far. We'll just have to play it by ear and see how the, the hours play out as we go across the country. So let's crank the music up and... Get to Topeka and pick up. Well, I'm here in Topeka picking up this Cedar Creek and this is a new thing got an air ride hitch had no clue how much air to put in the thing I had to look it up online and evidently there can be between 20 and 150 or something like that but I think I'm gonna put about I don't know, 40 pounds in it and see how it goes 
We'll start there. Never done one of these. Well, it started moving at 55. Well, at 52 it started going up and at 55 it expanded more. So I think I'm gonna run it for at least down to the truck stop at 55 and then we'll see what comes after that. drivers they just whoo, waved at me going by in Nebraska good morning made it to sorry if I'm not my chipper self it's still sun still over there you know I'm not a morning person last night made it to Grand Island Nebraska and then started talking to two other wave drivers so we shot the bull for a while and then well, then they brought out two dogs and you know me and dogs so had to pet the puppies and then uh, then we ran a scan tool on his truck one of their trucks and then went and then had dinner together so that was really awesome um, the people you meet on this on the road out here I I don't think that I've ever met, well, maybe one. Maybe one other transporter that I actually talked to out here that that uh, wasn't super friendly or super helpful or anything like that. So, um, so I really enjoy talking to uh, people when I'm out here. We're all doing the same thing. We're all seeing the same, the, the same things on the load boards and everything else that's going on but it's it's just nice to get a different perspective when when i'm out here so we had some dinner and then sit up and went to bed so that's why i didn't do the video last night um but now i gotta get the blinds out of the window and try to get some coffee in me and then get on the road so i gotta wake up first so i'll check in later made it to Evanston, Wyoming, got some dinner, did my walk, did like six circuits around the truck stop, and then went in and got a good long hot shower. They had, or they have, uh, really decent showers here. Uh, big area, Lots of place to spread out. And it's not a bad stop. There's uh, not great parking here though. I mean, if you wanna park by, back by the semis, then um, there's more parking back there. But there's not a whole lot of RV parking here. When I hit Evanston, usually uh, this is taken up. I've gotten to park here maybe I don't know, half a dozen times. There's a spot right here next to the road. But uh, usually I, I go one exit up and then there's a Walmart. And then I'll stay in the Walmart parking lot there. And then uh, in the morning, then I'll come down here and stop here and grab some coffee before I head on out. But this is exit three. So I'm basically three miles from uh, going into Utah and then from there I'll go into Nevada and then into California. Tomorrow's probably going to be a shorter day because uh, I don't really want to be in California for uh, for too much. There's not a whole lot of parking around where I'm going so I think I'm going to hold up somewhere maybe past Reno. I, I just got to see where, where I end up 
and I can't deliver until 10 o'clock anyway on Sunday. So I don't really have to get up super early uh, to do that. Or I can get up a little bit earlier and then make the 10 o'clock. So I, I can cut my day short a little bit tomorrow. So we'll just have, kind of play it by ear and see where we end up. Nevada hold up here in a Walmart and then I will deliver tomorrow but I can't deliver until 10 so I've got a couple hours to drive from here to delivery and then I'll be back this way I'm gonna go over I think I'm gonna go over Donner Pass the real Donner Pass well I don't know about the real Donner Pass but I'm gonna go through Donner Pass and uh just to see it on the way back do some sightseeing so uh i'm tired time change got me all jacked up so i will check in with you tomorrow So got all delivered on a Sunday. They didn't, evidently I read the paperwork wrong. They don't take delivery until 11, but I was there at 10.30. Manager came out, checked me in, signed me off. No driver damage, Psh, get out of here. So now I'm off to Downer Pass. So let's go check that out. Welcome to the Bonneville Salt Flats. 40 square miles of salt. Mmm. 
That's so good. Oh, man. You gotta come out here. Mm. Yeah. The Bonneville Salt Flats, one of the flattest places on earth. The salt flats were formed when a big old lake called Lake Bonneville dried up a long time ago. It was around 15,000 years ago it started drying up and then what you see is what's left of that old lake. It was bigger than Lake Michigan, about the, uh, it covered about a third of Utah and uh, a little bit of a couple other states too. It is home of the famous Measured Mile. Now the Measured Mile isn't really one mile, it's actually five miles long or roughly five miles long. There's a two mile run up and a two mile run out. So when you do a speed test, when they do the land speed record there, you have two miles to get up to speed, then you have to hold that speed for one full mile, and then you have two miles to slow down. Then you have to turn around and do it again in one hour. And then you can have your record, whatever, in the record books if you actually went fast enough. Uh, sad to say, Daisy did not get up to the appropriate speed, but we try it. Now I said it was one of the flattest places on earth and that's not exactly true because, sorry, I'm gonna hurt some feelings here, the earth is not flat. So the measured mile, the five miles of that racetrack, when it's got a black line painted down the middle of it and you actually can't see the end of the racetrack from the start point because of the curvature of the earth, because the earth is round. The salt flats are up to 10 feet thick in some places. When it rains, it leaches more minerals out of the mountains and it goes into a really shallow aquifer that's underneath the salt flats. Then the weight of the salt pushes down in that water and forces the water up through little percolation holes the water gets to the surface of the salt flats and then evaporates and it builds more salt up every time that it rains. Unfortunately, in 2022 this year, Speed Week was canceled because of the rain that they got and how much water was standing all over the racetrack. Humans have lived in the area for about 10,000 years, but the ill-fated Donner Party came through here and they didn't quite have a good time. The wagons got stuck in the mud and it really, really slowed them down and it was a major contributing factor of their failed attempt to get over the mountains before the winter set in and then you know what happened after that. So that's the trip to California, Donner Pass, and the Bonneville Salt Flats. Hope you appreciate the video. If you did, then click the subscribe button down there. Click the like button. This is for those of you that stayed till the end of the video. The egg, it was just regular sea salt. I mean, I did go out and taste the salt because, I mean, you have to, but. <laughs> and as always, have safe travels and I hope to see you on the road.